Good morning. I'll uh, call the November 19th, 2019 regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? <laughs> Supervisor Leopold. Here. Friend. Here. Coonerty. McPherson. Here. And Vice Chair Caput. Here. And if we could have a, a moment of prayer or moment of silence, uh, and then we'll follow with the um, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Carlos Palacios, are there any late agenda items? Uh, yes, there are. On the regular agenda number eight, uh, staff requests that this item uh, be continued to December 10th. Uh, on the consent agenda, item 22, there's additional materials, the letter of the Superior Court on item 23, there's additional materials, Granicus Exhibit B. And on item 45, there's a correction. The item should read, and uh, quote, and direct parts to parks to return on December 10th, 2019 for approval of the lease. There's also uh, additional materials on item 45, the revised memo packet, page uh, 1060, and an attachment A. Thank you. Okay. And do any of the board members wish to pull any consent items from the regular agenda or any comments? Okay. And now's the time for uh, public comment. Uh, how many people would like to speak at this moment? Okay. Uh, we'll go with uh, three minutes. And uh, now's the opportunity for the public to address the board on topics that are on today's agenda, consent items, closed session agenda, and topics that are not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the board. Um, if you cannot stay later to speak on regular agenda items, you may address the board on those items at this time. Okay, thank you. Good morning, um, my name is Mariah Roberts um, and I am now uh, here talking as the director of Friends of Santa Cruz County Parks. Um, thank you so much for your service. Um, the last time, last few times you've seen me here, uh, it's been to thank you for your partnership to build Chanticleer Park, Leo's Haven at Chanticleer Park. And I want you to know that very soon we'll be reaching out to you with um, an invitation to come to the ribbon cutting. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, that park is incredible and it also proves that private public partnership is a great way to realize our community's hopes and dreams. We have more than 49 county parks and beaches. At least 14 of them have community designed master plans that look so beautiful, but are on paper and are sitting on shelves without funding. Um, the funding is just hard to find. It's, it's oftentimes not there. The community needs and loves these spaces. They serve the, the community. We wanna thank you for directing uh, Director Gaffney to continue working with us at Friends to help look for ways to, to do more things like Shannon Clare and to continue these private public partnerships to realize what our community has already told us that they want and need. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Trisha Proctor and I am part of a team of local philanthropists who are trying desperately to donate to the community design plan out at Adpa Seacliff Park. Um, I want to thank you for supporting Director Jeff Gaffney of the County Parks Department to continue working with friends and us um, to see this project through. 
And because of the private public partnership of the Chanticleer Park, we are hopeful we can see many projects like that one and the one out at Aptossie Cliff. So thank you. Okay. Hi, good morning. My name is Stephanie Weingarten. I reside in Boulder Creek. Um, I just came in this morning to share a situation that I had yesterday. Um, yesterday, I had a man pull into my driveway, walk around my home, and begin taking photographs. I had no idea who this person was, and I have to say I was concerned, very concerned. I had my children at home. I was a little bit concerned for my safety. When I approached him, um, he did identify himself to me as a code inspector from the planning department. Um, my recommendation today to you would be that um, your planning department employees wear IDs and drive vehicles that are clearly marked. I don't, I don't see why he wouldn't have had a lanyard on with an ID or pull into my driveway with a vehicle with clearly marked letters saying that it was a county um, a county vehicle. Um, so I'm here today just to, to say that just so that there's other women at home that aren't concerned for their safety because someone's coming into their property un unannounced um, without ID. Um, thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, good morning all. Rod Caborn uh, with Save Our Shores. And thanks for all the work you're doing. Uh, apologies, I would not be uh, available later on, hence my uh, speaking now in the public moment. Uh, it's with regard to uh, your great work on plastic pollution and the 25 cent uh, fee that you are planning on, on placing on cups, which needless to say, uh, I very much endorse. But I did want to state that uh, I hope so very much that uh, you all as a body uh, as much as you've done great work thus far, and that would be toiletries that you've already accomplished, um, that hopefully will go through, and you've already expressed uh, um, some en enthusiasm around uh, balloons and contact lenses and uh, creating restrictions on that. But I would like to implore you that uh, that isn't the time to leave it as you know, we've we've done as much as we can. We've uh, taken care of things as far as they will go, and we need to move on to other items because still, in uh, it's it's the big big stuff, and it's on the table. And I've mentioned it before. I think that a bottle ban, plastic bottles in our community. I think you guys are uniquely positioned as the authority on this in a place where it could actually go through. And uh, I know that the community is behind it, and I know that the business community can get behind it because you guys are actually part of the reason that this particular community in this place in California is so progressive and is so well informed that they will take it on. And if we do that in Santa Cruz, California, the rest of California is watching, and then there, therefore the rest of the nation is watching. And this could be something that really gets us going to the point where we start addressing the plastic pollution problem as one of production. This will be one that's it's emblematic. The plastic bottle is an emblem and a symbol of this struggle. And when people grasp that, yeah, this is doable, then it could explode and it could ultimately get to, it all starts at grassroots, but it could ultimately get to the producers of plastic and ultimately look to different means of providing uh, non-plastic produced products. This is how it will start. And again, you guys are uniquely positioned to make it start. It's been done in other cities, as I've mentioned before, and it would be huge if you guys were to lead it here in Santa Cruz, California. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have now uh, action on the consent agenda. Uh, Supervisor McPherson. I just uh, I'm going to make a comment on a few of uh, the items, um, number 29, 30, and 31. Uh, regarding county fire, I'm glad to see that we've updated our code and strengthened our fire prevention enforcement. And I'm also glad to see our local fire districts have updated their ordinances to align with the counties. Um, 
I wanna thank CAL FIRE in particular, State Parks, Santa Cruz Police and Fire, and the Sheriff's Office uh, for meeting with my office earlier this year to ensure that um, we have a consistent enforcement of campfires. It's important that we all are providing the same type of response and education to folks in this regard. Um, on item number 41, the downtown streets team. Uh, once again, I wanna thank our human services department for coming up with this innovative approach to using our CalFresh dollars. Uh, I'm pleased to have downtown streets team working in Felton, as they have been for uh, a longer period of time in the city of Santa Cruz, and I know Supervisor Coonerty is happy to have them uh, now in support in Davenport. Uh, there is one question I'd have, maybe you could answer if, um, We've received uh, requests for downtown streets to expand to other areas too. Uh, do you know whether the DST has a capacity to add more of uh, these teams? Uh, do we have the CalFresh dollars or is there a, a, an opportunity to get that? Uh, good morning, Supervisors. Uh, Ellen Timberlake, the Director of the Human Services Department. I would say that yes, we do. I wanna just acknowledge what a wonderful partner Downtown Streets team has been with our department and every time we have approached them to see whether they could expand to the North Coast, Felton, currently we're in conversations with the Grant Street and Maline area. Uh, they have been very receptive and responsive and so uh, we are, as you know, we are very committed to expanding this program wherever there's a a need and an opportunity. So I do believe that uh, they would welcome any additional conversations around expanding to other areas and we would certainly support that. Okay, great. And just for people to know, downtown streets team is uh, it's the homeless uh, population in particular that uh, get uh, remuneration through uh, food and clothing uh, for the, their 20 hours or so that they spend cleaning up our communities. Uh, it's, it's a win-win situation to help those feel um, some, some more worthiness, I guess you'd say, uh, in this regard and uh, cleaning up our communities. And so if people see them and they're, uh, I think they're most all, they're all yellow shirts, um, just say thank you for doing what they're doing because they're helping our community and we're helping them to get back on track. So it's a great program. Um, one other thing on the ADU program, I want to applaud the uh, county planning department uh, for its work uh, they have done in the recent years to promote uh, accessory dwelling units um, to incentivize uh, property owners to, uh, to build them. I think it's probably the best way we can, uh, most immediate way we can address affordable housing issues in this our community. Uh, in the San Renzo Valley portion of my district, uh, this is the main way we've been able to impact uh, affordable housing with our limitations that we have in land use restraints, uh, an acre uh, parcel uh, per parcel. Um, but in, um, I, I wanted to find out if there's, we have a, f a forgivable loan fee and a waiver program. And if, do you think we could, we would see, I don't know if anybody uh, or if they, if they do, from planning could let us know. Um, it seems like we could even do better. And if we lowered those commitments, uh, do we have any indication that that could help us not have a 20 year program maybe uh, or commitment or, and a 15 year commitment instead, uh, something of that nature? We haven't found that the, um, the term of affordability is an obstacle. What we have found is as people are um, interested in the idea of building an ADU, and I think that the programs have helped along with a, a lot of programs going on statewide, pique the interest and get people started on the process. Um, I, I don't think that the term of affordability would make it faster. Um, I think it just takes the time it takes. It's a complicated process to build an ADU. Okay, thank you for the, uh, that effort. And I wanna thank the, the county board in particular for um, us addressing our, our uh, housing crisis that we have here. I think this is a good way to go about it. And uh, we have had some success. Uh, and if we can make it better, if there's any suggestions, I would welcome them in my office. And I know that it, the others would too. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's it. Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, I'll just briefly speak on a couple items. On item 26, I'd just like to officially uh, welcome Jason Heath as new county council. We're excited to have you officially take over the reins of that position. We know 
Uh, you have our full confidence and we're excited to have you take that position over. Um, item 40, the agreement with Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. It's hard to imagine uh, more important work being done than behavioral health work in our local schools, especially in the South County. So I appreciate uh, the Director of Health Services entering into this contract. PVPSA does remarkable work, especially in the South County. And um, as we've seen across the country, I think that the more money we can put into prevention, early intervention and behavioral health programs in schools would be important. Uh, item 45, we had two members of the community come to speak to this, but it's, it's to uh, accept the donation of design plans for a skate feature at Sequa Village Park, as was mentioned. Uh, th this is actually a, a pretty significant deal. It's pretty remarkable that we're able to complete a part of a phase of a local project because we had uh, some people in the local community step up and say that they wanted to do this. I appreciate the work of the Director of Parks. I appreciate the work of the CAO's office and County Council as well on this. Uh, but we do have these master plans. And in some cases, I know uh, for one of my colleagues here for the farm park, it goes on for quite some time. For me, for polo grounds, for almost 30 years, there was bathrooms that were uh, committed to that never existed. So we didn't want this to just be a master plan that sat on the shelf. And as a result of a partnership with uh, some local community members, it looks like phase two of this park is gonna happen a lot sooner than it would have otherwise. And we owe a lot of uh, huge debt of gratitude to you on that. Um, on item 47, to echo some of the comments that Supervisor McPherson said, uh, I do believe that it shows here that the fee waiver program is clearly working. I mean, we've doubled the number of applications we've received than before the state and local changes were made. Uh, and I think that accessory dwelling units are really one of the huge keys here to building uh, local affordable housing. It's, it's actionable and it's doable. It's hard. Uh, as we saw with uh, the very important project that was approved last week in, in the mid-county area, it's hard to build a large apartment complex. It's hard to build deed-restricted affordable housing. It's not that hard to build ADUs, and you can really uh, build as many units in a year as it takes us maybe 15 or 20 years to build the same number within one development. And I think that this is an important component of affordable housing within our county, and I think that we should continue to try and do everything we can uh, to work on it. I appreciate the work of Ms. Conway in our, our housing section of the planning department. She does remarkable work uh, for affordable housing in our community. And I'll close on item 51, which is just the approval of an emergency contract for repairs on Sumner. This has been a very complex project. And I appreciate Public Works' uh, partnership with the utilities that uh, helped cause some of this, as well as our own issues on a very old culvert through there. Uh, it's a complex, not just number of players involved. It's a very deep and large uh, project involved, which is why you see the cost, but it's pretty important because most of the road there, if you haven't been through there, is basically collapsed. And so I appreciate you taking the lead on that in public works. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, just a couple of items to comment on. I will add my uh, congratulations uh, to Jason Heath as our new county council. Um, this uh, contract that we have here is just a, another example of the way in which we are recognizing him. We will, uh, he will start uh, uh, after the first of the year and we will miss our current county council when, uh, when she leaves us at that time. Um, on item number 36, I'd like to uh, thank the sheriff uh, and his staff uh, for uh, seeking out uh, this funding to support uh, school safety. I think it's uh, really uh, important. Uh, it's something that uh, constituents talked about all the time and they value the partnership that the sheriff's office has with our local schools. So thank you for going out and getting that, that funding. On item number 41, the downtown streets team, I uh, wanna uh, appreciate the work that the downtown streets team uh, does and appreciate that the human services de department uh, has found uh, new ways to use some funding to expand uh, their outreach. Uh, after doing a cleanup with the Grant Park's neighbors group, it became real clear that that, that was an area that uh, could uh, take advantage of that in the Emmeline area. And I'm glad to see that we're moving forward with that. And I look forward uh, to that starting in February. Um, and that's it. Okay. Uh, I'll go a little bit out of order only because uh, uh, Marilyn, do you want to speak uh, on the consent agenda or anything that's not on the consent agenda? I'm assuming you got caught in the traffic on Highway 1, and if you would like to speak, uh, you may too, okay? I'll, I, and I won't say anything. I'm giving you my time. Wow. Thank you very much. We were caught in terrible traffic, as you, you probably were earlier. Bad, yeah. 
My name is Monica McGuire. <clears throat> this is all I can think to do today. There's trouble in the world, there is no denying. Too many people are crying and dying. We've got problems like last night at the fire protection meeting. We heard how they've begged and begged for funding and been told there is none. How can fire protection not get funded so many years in a row? How can our firemen be left telling us their requests fell on deaf ears? How can we be asked to pay more taxes now? How can that be? What we need is a way to come together, to be represented. Not being there last night seemed hor horrifically angering to most of the 50 in the room. I don't understand what's needed to pull more of the county together to act, but I'm willing to sing today to try another way to get that message out. And I thank Becky Steinbrenner for calling the meeting last night and giving a forum as needed for people to say what's going on and get beyond the frustration. Thank you. Welcome. And what a gorgeous voice, what a wonderful person. This is the singing portion of the meeting. Wow. So um, Marilyn, if, you, if you'd like to sing, that's what we would like. Oh, well, that would really not be good, believe me. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you, uh, Supervisor Kappa, for letting us speak. We definitely were caught in traffic. Um, references, I want people to know for the wireless microwave danger is um, takebackyourpower.net, Barry Trower, and Dr. Magda Havas, and a recent testimony by Dr. Sharon Goldberg opposing 5G in Michigan where she starts out saying wireless radiation has biological effects, period. It's in the peer reviewed literature and focuses in on the diabetes epidemic, heart problems, mental health, and there's a whole list. And these facts of the harm are not new. I took this book off the shelf from my parents' literature, my mother, avid reader, The Zapping of America. Microwaves, their deadly risk and the cover-up. Microwave radiation can blind you, alter your behavior, cause genetic damage, even kill you. The risks have been hidden from you by the Pentagon, the State Department, and the electronics industry. With this book, the microwave cover-up is ended. This is by Paul Brodeur, written in 1977, 42 years ago, what a lot of the evidence shows today. Um, I recommend that book highly, and I'd like you to agendize in the future, uh, signing on to the international appeal to stop 5G on earth and in space. You have been provided copies of that more than once. And locally here, uh, the push for 5G and 4G is a precursor to it, uh, took place 
in this room an approval of a cell site at the Seventh Day Adventist uh, campsite on Old San Jose Road, approved by the zoning administration administrator on the first of this month. It's on appeal, but uh, available at the back table was this Verizon Wireless Communications Facility paper put out by Verizon engineering uh, necessity case. Necessity, I thought food, clothing, shelter, employment was necessity. necessities, not getting more microwave damage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Caput. Um, you extended this time an opportunity for Marilyn. Are you willing to extend it for me? Thank you very much. And I appreciate your kindness and respect for the public's opportunity to speak before your board. Thank you. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I'm a resident of rural Aptos. And I want to thank um, Ms. McGuire for bringing to you in a very creative way the issues that came up in last night's public meeting in Coralitos. Uh, Supervisor Friend, we really missed seeing you there. It was an opportunity for people to get information. And I really want to thank and information, information about the proposed public benefit assessment for county service area 48, an additional fee that is uh, before the voters, property owners now. And I really want to thank county staff, um, CAO, general services, uh, Chief Larkin was there, uh, Ginny Petras from general services, and the um, engineer, Jeanette came down to talk with people and give them good, accurate information. There was a clear um, voice of the people they do support county fire and all that it offers, but they want to know why you, the Board of Supervisors, is not willing to give any money at all of Proposition 172 and Measure G to county fire. You've got to be accountable to this. You get $18 million last year and all but a half of a percent went to law enforcement and now you come to the voters to ask for a lot of money. For some people in the audience, they're barely able to hang on. They talked a lot about how property taxes are already a big struggle for them to pay. And it isn't the lack of service that they're talking about. It isn't the, that they're not willing to support county fire. They are, and everyone appreciates the service that county fire volunteers and Cal Fire provides to the state responsibility area. But you, as our elected officials, need to step up and fund it. And that's what the people resoundingly said last night. So um, I, I want to just also point out on your consent agenda, uh, item number 28 brings a little bit of money in to help with uh, funding apparatus and, and um, equipment. So I'm grateful for that. And um, I also want to just say that um, on item 39, um, Balance Hydrologics, this, this Thursday, tomorrow night, the Mid-County Groundwater Agency will be approving their plan for groundwater sustainability. And uh, Santa Margarita is, is on the heels of that too. So I hope that you, and I know some of you are on that board, I hope you were, will carefully look at that plan. Um, and some good news. We all need good news. Coming in today, sitting in traffic, I heard that uh, effective January 1st, 2020, uh, ocean trawling will be illegal all along the coast of the Pacific. That's good news. Thank you. And thank you again for allowing us to speak. Thank you. Uh, do we have uh, any comments or uh, action on the consent agenda? I would move the consent agenda. We have a first and second, uh, Leopold and McPherson, and uh, uh, we have a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed, that's uh, unanimous. Now we'll turn to the regular agenda, item number seven. Uh, on building codes, uh, Mr. Palacios. Yes, this is a uh, public hearing to consider ordinance amending chapter 12.1 of the Santa Cruz County Code for the purpose of adopting the 2019 California Building Standards Codes and local amendments. 
and the resolution accepting sequent notice of exemption determination. Schedule the ordinance for final adoption on December 10th, 2019 and take related actions as outlined in the memorandum of the planning director. Good morning, Chair, Supervisors, David Carlson from the Planning Department. Um, in the state of California, every county and city is required to um, enforce the California Building Standards Codes in Title 24 of the California Code of Regulations. Um, the county implements this requirement through Chapter 12.10 of the county code. Um, every three years, the state updates the state building code, and every year the county is required to readopt the state building code through an amendment to Chapter 12.10 of the county code. Um, local jurisdictions are allowed to make amendments to the state code, um, and the county does that in Chapter 12.10, um, includes all the local amendments that the county has um, adopted over the years, and we're proposing that um, readopt all those amendments with only minor changes. Um, there's no real significant changes to the uh, 2019 California Building Code. The, the new significant change is a requirement that as of 20, January 1st, 2020, all new homes in the state of California will be required to be solar powered. And then California is the first state in the nation to implement that. Um, and so with that, it's therefore recommended with, that the Board of Supervisors uh, conduct a public hearing to consider the proposed amendments to Chapter 12.10 of the Santa Cruz County Code, adopt a resolution making findings regarding tactical amendments of uh, the California Building Code, and find the proposed amendments are exempt from further environmental review under the California Environmental Quality Act, and directing staff to file the CEQA notice of exemption and adopting concept, the ordinance amending County Code Chapter 12.10 for the purpose of adopting the 2019 Building Standards, building standards <clears throat> Code with local amendments and direct the clerk of the board to place the ordinance on the next board agenda for final adoption and direct the planning director to submit a copy of the technical amendments to the 2019 California Building Standards Codes and a copy of the board's adopt adopted resolution containing the associated findings to the California Building Standards Commission. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Um, we're here, we're here uh, for available for questions. I'm here with Marty Heaney, the uh, Chief Building Inspector for the county. Okay, any comments, uh, questions from the board? Really appreciate the, the state stepping up for all solar powered ho new homes. Um, it's about time and it's gonna really be a benefit to the state and our community from, from now on. Really appreciative of that. You uh, any uh, questions or comments from the public? Got, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. I appreciate three instead of two. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Caput. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I'm a resident of rural Aptos. Um, I, I would like to also ask that our building department consider in working toward implementing required water recirculation within homes. New construction at UCSC, I'm told by the city of Santa Cruz water department is already doing this, that whenever um, you let the water run to get it hot, that it is in a separate recirculated system and it can be returned to use for toilet flushing or things like that. That is, that is present in the industry. It would be a huge water saving feature for new construction in our county. And I urge this county to move forward with such water saving devices in all new construction. I also ask that your board take a hard look at policy established in 12.10.150. Uh, and that is the regulation that makes you the building code appeals board. This count, it is required that every county have one such board. This county used to have a board that was composed of a licensed, qualified industry specialists in various construction fields, and that was the board. For some reason, County Administrative Officer Susan Mariello changed that. She took it away from the uh, professionals 
and she gave the power to you. You are very well qualified in many things, but I do not think that this is a service to the people who want to bring these sorts of appeals. And I expect that you would have to call in experts, and that's an expense to the county. Let's take it back to how it should be and used to be and reestablish code 112.10.150 as the building and fire code of appeals being composed of local qualified licensed professionals. Thank you. I'm gonna keep up the singing. I love what Becky just said because she reminded me again of all the things I've known and asked about. For example, I wonder about passive solar as well. It's been around since the 70s and it saves so much energy. Different from active solar, most people don't even know what it means anymore but it's easy to add to building codes, is it not? You're nodding your head, thank you. And Becky's point, I met Dan Bronson, one of the former people who did get appointed as the backup for inspections that people come to ask about. And he was run out of town all five of the previous people who were appointed to help and listen to the public who didn't like what building inspectors said were told they weren't welcome anymore. And that was the end years and years ago. I'm told that's not legal in the state. I'd love for you to tell us what's true about that. Please. Give us more answers. Thank you. I'll uh, ask each member if you have any comments and uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, we can do it in any order. Uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, for doing this work that we do annually. Uh, it was great to see the state moving forward and I appreciate the efforts of our building department uh, to incorporate these changes. I would move the recommended actions. Any other comments? No? Um, uh, I'm just curious, it was brought up, uh, the water circulation, I, I heard that 30 years ago. That's an old idea where the water circulates and then when you turn it on, you don't have to wait for hot water to come out of the faucet. Is that, is that something, do uh, you have any comment on that? Yeah, it, yes, sir, it's not a mandatory measure. Um, however, it is available to uh, the customer if they want to uh, install a restart pump. Right, so, uh, but it's an old, old idea. It, yeah. it is. So it would save some water. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what is this, uh, is the solar uh, shelf life uh, longer than it used to be? Uh, before on solar power, uh, you got about 20 years, you lost about 5% per year. Uh, is that improved? It, it has, the uh, quality of the solar panels are, have improved greatly. And uh, I'm being told by the people in the industry that it's 30 years now for a, for a good system. So what would you say if uh, the, the newer solar, solar powers, what would their shelf life be? I'm being told by the industry it's 30 years. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and do we have a second? Uh, first by uh, Leopold, the second by uh, Supervisor McPherson. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposition passes unanimously. Uh, and we'll go to item number eight, public hearing to consider so, adoption. Uh, so item eight no. was uh, continued. Eight, 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 eight was continued. So to, we to nine. All right. Okay, you're right. Okay. Go to nine. <clears throat> 
Ambassador Report and Study Session on the Santa Cruz County Performance Measurement Initiative and direct the County Administrative Office to return in May of 2020 with an update as outlined in the memorandum of the County Administrative Officer. Um, go ahead. Uh, are there any uh, questions or comments uh, from the board members? So they're gonna be giving we'll, we'll a, wait, a report. We'll, yeah, so this we'll is uh, Nicole Coburn, um, Assistant CAO, who will be introducing the item. So good morning, Supervisor Caput and members of the board. Um, as Carlos said, I'm Nicole Coburn, Assistant County Administrative Officer, and I'm pleased to be here today for this study session on performance measurement. We have called this a study session um, because we wanna work with the board in establishing community in the community impacts we want to measure and track. And we also wanna get your feedback on our first efforts in creating program dashboards that educate the public and provide accountability and transparency. We're gonna be doing this study session today in two parts. Right after we present our draft committee impact measures, we wanna take a moment to pause and just see if you have any input. If not, that's fine. We can move forward with showing you our program dashboards and then we can take your feedback at the end. Um, during the latter part of this study session, you're going to be hearing directly from members of our parks and probation department. Um, they're gonna be discussing how this initiative has been received and the results um, of the initial dashboards and what they hope to realize. So with that, I'm going, as you can see here, this slide shows our four management initiatives. Uh, with board and staff support, the county has staggered the introduction of four initiatives over the last two years. We have the strategic plan that the board approved a couple years ago that sets our direction. We also have our operational plan and two-year budget to create and finance our priorities. We have Primo Santa Cruz, a process, uh, continuous process improvement effort, which is ingraining improvement as part of our everyday work. And finally, this year we are rolling out performance measurement as a tool to measure and report on progress across these initiatives. So performance measurement and process improvement both start from the premise that every county employee wants to know what their, that their work is having a positive impact on people's lives. With performance measurement in particular, we want, to be, we want it to be useful to departments, empower our employees, start small, learn, and build on our successes, and educate the board and the public on what we are doing to provide transparency and accountability. So now to give you a more in-depth preview of what we've been working on as part of the performance initiative, I'm gonna introduce Sven Stafford from the County Administrative Office. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, good morning, supervisors. As Nicole mentioned, performance measurement is a tool to measure and report on progress across our initiatives. Um, and the best way to think about the different types of measures is to consider the level of impact. So at the strategic plan level, we're talking about community impacts. At the operational plan and budget level, we're talking about program impacts. And at the Primo Santa Cruz level, we're talking about process impacts and improvements. So the strategic plan works at the community level. Uh, the board established a vision, mission, values, and 24 goals for the county. In order to measure progress towards achieving that vision and mission, we need to establish a set of community impact measures that can serve as a proxy for the types of changes we want to see. <clears throat> to do this, the county is aligning the, with the great work being done by uh, Human Services Department and CORE. Uh, through an extensive community process, CORE has established eight core conditions, each of which has a menu of 20 to 30 indicators. Uh, we have worked with CORE to align uh, indicators so that measures we are tracking are a subset of the core condition menu. Uh, and CORE will present more on their progress to the board in January. Uh, we have chosen to limit the number of measures we have to 24 in order to keep it relatively simple. Uh, and we had provided a draft list for the board today. Um, all of these indicators will be tracked through the county's partnership with DataShare. Uh, <coughs> DataShare includes over 230 indicators that are automatically updated and we are working diligently with the data share steering committee to include data from community, from the community assessment, assessment project, uh, additional core results menu indicators, and eventually locally generated data. Uh, and you'll note 
that approximately that 14 of the proposed 24 indicators are currently available in data share. Um, so let's take a quick tour to see what that looks like in action. Um, um, So you'll see under the draft community profile, uh, community impact indicators are arranged by the strategic plan focus area. Uh, in this first example, under health and safety, we can see that we have an indicator around adults with access to uh, a usual source of health care, and can see that we compare well with other California counties. Uh, if we click on the link, uh, we get even more information from our data share portal. Uh, including definitions, sources, the ability to disaggregate by age, gender, race, and ethnicity, and then links to related indicators, promising interventions, and other data resources. And eventually this will also link to a core conditions dashboard that will be built on the data share platform. So, for next steps, uh, we would like to get in board feedback on the draft community impact measures. Uh, we will continue to work with CORE to align impact measures and get them into data share. We will continue to work with data share on creating a community platform for data that is equitable, accessible, and drives coordinated collective impact. Uh, we plan to return to the board in May with proposed measures and then return annually thereafter to report on progress and make recommendations on indicator updates. And at this time, we'll take a pause to take any questions and feedback uh, the board might have on the community impact measures. Supervisor Leopold. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a question, the, these uh, community impact measures seem very good. Um, there is one that I want to just have you explain and think maybe if this is the right indicator or whether we should be looking at another indicator. This is in the final section on dynamic economy where it talks about people 25 or older with a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, I'm assuming that we're, that we're asking that question because uh, college degree and postgraduate post degrees tend to lead to higher wages. Is that accurate? And that's why we're looking at that measure? Yeah, I think that's a, I can, that's a general, generally a good assumption. Um, one of the things it seems to me that might be uh, a, a, a better measure of a dynamic economy would be about um, information on uh, which jobs pay living wages. Uh, you know, uh, we know that here in Santa Cruz, there's a diversity of jobs. And uh, we just read about it in the paper this morning um, about a low unemployment rate, uh, but still a challenges for some of our businesses to uh, retain workers because of the high cost of living. And so I'm wondering if we, if our measure for dynamic economy was instead of the, the degree is looking at um, living wage jobs or number of living wage jobs. And my guess is that there's some BLS uh, data um, uh, about that. Um, and it would be worthwhile, I think, to take a look at it. Cause I think that would, given our high cost of living, that seems like um, that would be a good measure for us. And that's how we should be measuring in some way job quality. Yeah, we can explore that. Yeah, because the, the other thing I'll just add is, you know, you could go to Cabrillo, um, uh, get a two-year nursing degree, and graduate into a sixty to eighty thousand dollar a year job. That wouldn't show up on this statistic um, because they were not getting a bachelor's degree. But that is a job that someone can afford to live here, and it's one of the, you know, healthcare being one of the pillars of the four pillars of our economy. So, uh, I the job quality becomes important uh, as well as just the educational degree. But I appreciate the work that's gone into this. Yeah, we'll take a look at what data is available in the different sources and um, if necessary, other areas like BLS or other agencies. Okay, thank you. I just wanna briefly ask, uh, how do we define poverty when we're asking people whether they are experiencing poverty? Um. On this measure, it's the federal poverty thresholds. So, 
Okay. Because that's an available data set measure? Yeah, and we're working to, okay. to see if there's a better source that takes into account, uh, you know, cost of living, especially on, in California. Okay. I mean, because, well, PPIC did exactly that. And so I, if we could integrate in, I think that their data set is more relevant to us. Um, I, I guess the question would be if, if part of this is putting a data, is putting data out from a comparative standpoint so that people can see how other counties line up. Obviously the data sets in that point need to, to line up um, because the, I believe the PPIC numbers are, are more accurate, but I also think that, that they'll, in, they'll appear to inflate compared to what the federal definition would be. And so, uh, but anyway, I think it's a better measurement for us from a policy making standpoint. If it's, if it's possible to integrate in that data set, I think that'd be useful. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, the, uh, well, I think this is a two-year process and uh, it's, it's great to have this information that, uh, that, that you've brought forward. Um, you've, you've talked about um, the public facing dashboard and the internal uh, county um, staff communications, but um, is, is there a, an ongoing communication plan continuously to uh, inform the public other than the dashboard? Self. Yeah, we're working on the communication plan to convey the information. We're just in the development stages yeah, of okay. the community indicator dashboards and the program dashboards, but trying to convey to the public what we are putting online and also to our employees about what's available and what we're showing will be important. Yeah, because this is this is really some great metrics that you've you've had, and uh, just to better understand it for the general public and myself in some respects. Uh, is important, so I'm, I'm glad we're going to be continuing to develop that. And this is currently in development still, mm -hmm. so we're showing it to the board today and the public, but it's not outward facing on our website quite yet because we're wanting to get your input and refine these measures. And eventually, once it is public facing, well, we will be communicating this more broadly. Yeah, I think this is going to be good to just show how the county does its business and letting the public know why we're doing it and what we're doing. So, very good. I had one more question I realized I wanted to ask. Um, it's on the uh, impact measure for perception of crime. Um, and I'm wondering what we're, uh, what we're hoping to get out there and why we don't have perception of housing or homelessness, perception of other issues, why pick out one? And, and what, is, uh, what do we hope to glean from that? Um, so, Perception of crime actually is a question, a new question that was added to the community assessment project that will be released on Monday. And so that'll, that data will be out locally anyway for the, for the county. Um, and I think there's in general just a divergence between the actual crime rate and the perception of the crime rate. And I think that's what we're trying to demonstrate. Yeah, no, I, I, I get, I'm wondering why we don't look at other perception issues because we, we deal a lot with uh, uh, testimony here that are perceptions, but n not based uh, always in fact. And we're, that's, a, that's, a, that's an effort that we have to manage at all times. And so I'm, I'm wondering why we're picking one out of all the other uh, measures. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the only one we're measuring, but we don't need to include it if, if it's... I think, I think the answer is that the a United Way Community Assessment Project included this question and that, and we're using that as the data set. So we could talk to them and ask them um, about the other possibilities. I think that's, because that's what we're doing is we're just using the data set that's available in terms of this perception question and it's driven by their, their uh, survey and that's the data we're using. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm interested in taking a look at the information and it, it, we may just find over time it's, it's not, um, <coughs> Uh, it, it, I, I'm, I'm questioning what we, how we will deal with um, the information once we have it, because uh, uh, perceptions, uh, vote, uh, as compared to creating actual programs where we can actually make a difference, perceptions could actually be a lot harder. And we know from lots of uh, polling around issues like crime, the perception is, is generally way different than their reality of the, the situation. I don't expect that it'd be very different here in Santa Cruz. Um, and so I don't, I, over time, I'm not exactly sure how we would measure success um, 
uh, with that uh, perception issue because it's, it's just a it's a it's a it's a very ingrained uh, uh, piece of the American psyche. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I think we can look at it over time and, and figure out if there's actually any solution to dealing with that perception, uh, or whether we should look at other perception perceptive uh, issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can take a look at that. I want to thank you all. You're doing a good job, and I appreciate all the effort you're putting in here. And uh, thank you very much. So we're going to move on to our the program dashboards now. So okay. we'll we'll have another piece of the presentation. Uh, excellent. So the operational plan set forth 178 smart objectives that work to achieve strategic plan goals. Uh, each of the 178 objectives will be bi updated biannually on the operational plan website. And the first update to the plan will be brought to the board in January 2020. Uh, to create a program, we're taking from one to several objectives and grouping them together uh, to create a program. Um, we'll continue to refine the definition as we gain more experience working with departments. Uh, and for this fiscal year, uh, our office aims to create uh, dashboards for 10 to 12 programs that measure and report on whether a program is having its intended impact. So asking, are we doing the right thing? Um, the draft project pipeline is provided and includes projects from HSA, HSD, homeless services, public works, uh, cannabis, and planning. Draft programs were selected based on a variety of factors, including likely public interest, links to the operational plan, links to the strategic plan focus areas, available data, and staff capacity. And each program will have two basic results. Uh, first, an internal reporting dashboard that is used by the department to increase program impact and recommend changes. And second, an external public facing dashboard to provide education and transparency to the community. Um, and so in order to provide a consistent measurement framework for both internal and external reporting, the county is using a results-based accountability framework that asks of each program three basic questions. Uh, how much are we doing? How well are we doing it? And is anyone better off? Uh, this framework was developed specifically for government programs and has been used for many years by the county's human services and probation departments. Uh, it can apply across a wide range of programs that the county operates and requires over in general less staff training and expertise than comparable models. And so to give you an idea of how this works in practice, we have invited Eric Strum from the Parks Department and Sarah Jamison from the Probation Department to tell you about their performance measurement projects. Supervisors, Eric Stern, Superintendent with County Parks. Uh, I'm not I'd sure like your mic is on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to share some of the progress that we've made on our performance measurements projects. Our parks dashboard starts with a simple park inventory so that folks can quickly find park facilities they're looking for. You can zoom in and out on the map to find parks near you. You can also filter the parks by features such as playground and picnic areas. So if you wanted to find a park with both a playground and a picnic, you could click on both and look at the options. Looking for a skate park near you, you can click on that option too and further narrow the choices. If you live in North County, for instance, we can see that Highlands Park might be a nice option. The link at the bottom of the screen will even provide driving directions. Underneath the inventory, we're developing dashboards related to our awesome programs and great facilities, two pillars of our Parks Department strategic plan. I'm gonna show you a dashboard that we're working on for our aquatic youth. Obviously, we want everyone to have fun in the water. Our aquatic programs give county youth the skills they need to be safe. The first chart focuses on how well we're doing, namely the percentage of use that pass their, pass their class. We're also tracking enrollment by level so that we can ensure we're meeting the demand for classes. On the next page, you can see how well we're doing, the number of kids enrolled, and you can filter it by level. For instance, if we wanna see the number of seahorses, we just click on seahorse and view the number of classes and total enrollment. If parents wanna find out which classes run on Tuesdays or Thursdays, they can do that too. And if they wanna sign up, we've provided a link that takes them directly to the registration page. 
We're currently working with ISD and the CAO to automate these dashboards and get them ready for launch. Our staff, including Kathy DeWeil, Amelia Gamboa, Mary Chavez, and fellow Haven Parker have been instrumental in lifting this project. They're producing great results that not only engage the public, but also inform our parks department. We're confident that as we get more sophisticated, our internal reporting and measurements will all become better. And now I'd like to introduce Sarah Jamison from the probation department. Good morning, Supervisor Sarah Jamison, Senior Departmental Analyst. I'm going to talk a little bit about the dashboard we've been developing for our AB 109 treatment and intervention services. Although they're not the awesome programs the parks have, they're very important programs. Back in June, the board approved over 15 agreements related to, new, to a new four-year cycle of funding. These are all outcome-based contracts implementing evidence-based practices and issued with the overall purpose of reducing recidivism among the population receiving the services. Probation's operational plan objective aims to reduce recidivism by 10% over the next two years. The dashboard shows that objective and has further call-out boxes to define recidivism and what AB 109 is. On the following page, we disaggregate the recidivism data further by gender and ethnicity. So the question is then given this objective, what is our plan to reduce recidivism and make our clients better off? And the dashboard below addresses that. Before we demonstrate those, I should say that we are in the development, uh, the process of developing this data with our community providers and the data you are about to view is just for display, not actual data. Let's look at criminal thinking dashboard. Criminal thinking behavior and peers are the most strongly predictive criminogenic factors for recidivism. This program focuses on self-control, peer relationships, and uh, pro-social values. And looking at the evidence, if we are doing this well, we are looking for about 60% of the clients to demonstrate improvements in these areas based upon pre and post assessments. The second layer of the dashboard shows you how much we're doing, the number of clients who are receiving the service as well as the instruction hours. I've been working with and want to appreciate Andrew Davis and Diane Cole Casey with the probation department. Once we complete our web app for providers, they will be able to enter data online directly and it will automatically populate our internal dashboards. Once we validate the data, it will be available on the public dashboard. So, for next steps, uh, we would like to hear your first impressions of these dashboards. Uh, we are currently working towards a public release for this website, hopefully sometime in January. Uh, we're also working with departments to improve overall data management and to automate reporting across internal and external dashboards. Um, we also intend to be flexible and open about improving these products. Uh, these reports are fun to make and we hope they're useful for departments and the public and we'll be able to make updates to the dashboards as we learn and grow in this initiative. Uh, lastly, we'll return to the board in May with a progress update. Uh, before we wrap up, we want to make an important point about the scope of population versus program accountability. Uh, in the results-based accountability framework, community impact measures ask what results we want for all county residents uh, to have health insurance, access to good food, good schools, etc. On the program side, we still care about the same measures, but the program is accountable for the outcomes of the people that it serves, which is a subset to the community. Um, and so for the AB 109 example, um, we obviously want to reduce recidivism across all of our probation clients but in the AB 109 program example, we're really focusing just on that cohort who belong to the AB 109 population. Um, and before I end, I'd like to thank a couple people from ISD, uh, Kevin, Tibby, Nada, Silviana, Darlene, and Jan, uh, from, HS, from Human Services, Shara and Ben, from HSA, uh, Kelly, Rachel, Robert, and Emily, uh, parks and probation leadership from De Jeff and Fernando, and uh, the support of all of my colleagues in the administrative office, especially Eric and Dave. Uh, it's been a true team effort to get us this far and off the ground, and well, as we continue to learn and progress, uh, hopefully the, the results will, will be satisfactory. And with that, we'll take any questions or feedback. Well, 
I'll, I'll just say I really appreciate uh, this work. I think these dashboards will be, uh, have the potential to be used by the community to sort of see what their county dollars are actually supporting um, and what a difference they're making. And I look forward to, you know, a robust set of, uh, of uh, these measures on the dashboard so people can really interact with the county government in a new way. So thank you for the work that you put into it. Yeah, when, I, when I'm just looking through this and you're flipping through these things with all the kinds of data, I'm thinking that's just too much information. But boy, I'll tell you, the, you are going to have information for, on so many different subjects for people to find what they need or what they want. Um, this is really very impressive. Uh, is there any, I, I'm not, I don't know if there are any other counties that are taking this approach, but I just want to thank the CAO's office and everybody involved in this for really getting at this to let the county residents know what's available and what we're doing and what we are offering. Uh, is there, I don't know of anybody else that's doing it in this regard, in this depth. Have you followed anybody in this process or are you a leader? Are we a leader? Um, I mean, there are a lot of counties that are doing really good work with, with data and we've looked at a lot of different examples from across so, the country of things we like and things we don't like. Yeah, right. Well, congratulations. This is gonna be a really valuable tool for our county residents. Yeah, just uh, tell everybody you're the first and you're the ones that taught everybody else. <laughs> so, thank you. And uh, uh, comments from the public? How many, how many people want to speak about uh, two or three? Okay, three, three minutes, fine. Hello, my name is Susan Cavallari. I live in the city of Santa Cruz and I just want to make one quick um, statement. You have bus, um, you have car directions to the parks. Could you also have bus transportation information and also uh, walking and biking? Uh, because we're also trying to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and cars are uh, definitely a problem in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner, resident of rural Aptos. Thank you for these good reports. It's a tremendous amount of data and putting it all together in a public friendly way is, is a challenge and I appreciate your work. Um, I want to first speak to the first part of the presentation. Um, I did look at, I have looked at the dashboard, at, at least what is available now. And um, I note that there are a couple of, um, in the Primo presentations, there are a couple of issues that have, that address the planning permit processing. And that wasn't discussed here, but that's a huge issue for a lot of people in this county. And I will tell you that um, I recently talked with a person who's doing a, a, a restaurant project. She had a simple change order in a hood design and it has been stuck in the planning department for five weeks and is holding up her project. So um, we, we have work to do. <laughs> and um, I, want to, I want to just give you that information and, and hope that um, we can move forward with improving things and that this dashboard will assure people that they that you are working for that. Um, I still know that there is no youth commission and that is one issue in government experience and education and outreach we really do need to do. And um, I really wanna see a youth commission here in this county by youth. So please uh, consider that. Um, going back to the dashboard and an issue, in, and thank you, Supervisor Leopold, for um, bringing up the issue of, of employment and all of that. It is very difficult, I am told, for people in the restaurant trade and the um, landscape trades to even find workers. Um, they can't keep them here. They can't, uh, they can't find them. So that needs to be addressed in our data collection, uh, possibly gathering collection information from employers and find out what it is that's, that's causing them this difficulty so that our county can address it. Um, thank you for the information on the um, perception of crime. I also think there should be other perception uh, information gathered, most notably on the quality of life. I think that's a good overall one that we could use as a metric. Um, 
the probation uh, department, thank you very much for that. I would be interested as a member of the public to know in recidivism, how is uh, how does that interact with drug and alcohol treatment and mental health services? I think that's a, a good connection to try to make in the whole thing. I would like a definition of the AB 109 population. I don't know what that is. And, uh, and finally, how will the public be able to interact with this dashboard to add information and point out out things that would um, improve it. Thank you very much. Um, usually the federal poverty rate, uh, a, lo a lot of uh, jurisdictions use 150% of the federal poverty rate as representing a level of below which you would be poor. Uh, the poor families I know are paying not 30, not 40% of the income per rent. They're paying 60, 70% of the income per rent. And they're borrowing money extensively to pay those rents. So we're at a stage in our society's development where, where we need to have uh, a local minimum wage. We wouldn't be the first county to do that. Uh, other counties in the North Bay have set their own minimum wage uh, just so that families can survive and so that workers want to stay in the area. This is going to be necessary. I propose that it should be, um, there should be a, a lower minimum wage for small businesses, say below 50 employees, because I know they struggle. And, uh, but uh, for big successful uh, outfits, the, the minimum wage should be a lot higher. Thank you. Thank you, Monica McGuire again. Easier to just talk this time somehow. It is wonderful to hear your questions about this. My experience speaking with people all over this county for 22 years is the level of levels of overwhelm have risen and risen and risen, as others have just said as well. The perceptions that there is no point in getting involved in local government because we'll never be heard and we don't have time or energy. We're so busy just trying to get our heads above water is what I hear from people. So these would be further important metrics, please, to level the levels of overwhelm that people feel, the levels of fright and, and upset that the recidivism issue is so bizarre where they live that people are arrested and put right back out on the street to continue to defile their sidewalks and, and businesses and leaving needles everywhere and all of the things that people come and I hear people speaking about here as huge ongoing problems that aren't being addressed. If we could please have at least those included so that the total truth is aimed at. I really appreciate everything you all just said, giving feedback to this. And I love that data can do what it does. And it's really neat that we're on our way to doing something like this uniquely in the county, but the whole truth is really needed. And the, the difficulty of people to even feel they can pay their rent, as the gentleman just said, and move forward I, I don't see very many people getting online to look at this from what I've heard. People couldn't come out, more than 50 people, there were probably 50 people in the room last night who were fire fighters and, um, and people in the government trying to help explain why we have to pay another tax to get basic services. And people couldn't come and plenty of others were upset about that. There's no way to pull people together, it seems, anymore. I, these are really important aspects that are more than perceptions that if we could hear you representing that you understand and you're hearing us, you could probably get a lot more people to come to evening meetings, as we've said many times, to participate and, and come and change perceptions if that's what you believe, it's all misperception. But uh, just want to underline, there's so much greater that we need to keep looking at Please, let's not get lost in the minutia before we make sure we're looking at the whole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if we have a motion or do we, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To, uh, Supervisor Caput. Um, I'm listening to the report here and talking about health and safety impacts 
and are we doing the right thing in our policies? <laughs> and Becky brought up about the planning department. And I want to say, you know, make this specific because I'm always talking about health and safety. I wouldn't be coming here otherwise. And so um, going through the planning department over the years since I retired from teaching in 2000, zoning administrator meetings, and seeing the approval of the proliferation of these radiation emitting cell towers, permits issued all the time. And let's be real, these are permits to poison and to radiate the community on behalf of the telecom corporations. And this to me is overriding every single policy, every performance level you look at. If our health is threatened, as we are experienced, which we are, toxic trespass without our informed consent to be radiated by all this. There's a big problem. And the performance level on that as a member of the public, I'm sure Verizon, they're always praising the planners who recommend approval of these projects. And all these sites are going on in the public right of way now. And the health impacts are well verified, increased cancer incidents, people experiencing insomnia, fatigue, heart irregularities, increase in diabetes, on and on and on. This should be utmost priority. I went to a city council meeting in Santa Cruz within the last year, and there were people there from Monterey County as well. And the topic was health in all policies, looking at what our government policies doing. We need to have health in all policies. So my, and whatever we're told, you know, we have to follow this egregious law or not, the top priority is protecting the public well being. And we need to stop the proliferation of this assault on community health, wildlife health, pollinator health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd move the recommended actions on this plan and offer our thanks to all involved for the work. Second, we have uh, first from uh, Supervisor Leopold, the second from Supervisor McPherson. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposition? Passes unanimously. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. And should I go back to no, no, we're, we're not going to until next. Okay. <clears throat> Item number 10, uh, consider an ordinance amending the Santa Cruz County Code to add chapter 5.47 regarding a change, a charge on single use disposable cups at businesses in the unincorporated county. Consider proposed notice of exception CEQA and schedule the ordinance for a second reading and final adoption on December 10th, 2019, as outlined in the memorandum of the Deputy County Administrative Officer and the Director of Public Works. Good morning, Tim Gontroff, Department of Public Works, and with me is Casey Colasa, Recycling and Solid Waste Services Manager. As Chair Caput said, we're here with a proposed ordinance to impose a 25 cent charge on all single use disposable cups at businesses and special events within the unincorporated county. This is the same ordinance that was before you at your last meeting. So we won't go into all the details that we discussed at length then. At that meeting, you did direct one change, and that is the effective date of the ordinance 
which has been modified to take effect on July 1st of next year, 2020. That change is reflected in the ordinance before you. It's the only change. So therefore we are recommending that the board approve in concept an ordinance to add a charge on single use disposable cups at businesses in the unincorporated county, accept the proposed notice of exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act and schedule the ordinance for final adoption on December 10th, 2019. And we'd be happy to take any comments or questions. But, uh, Supervisor Friend. Thank you, Chair. I have two brief questions uh, that I thought about after our first uh, presentation. And obviously the board's supportive of this. We voted unanimously last time. But one of them, th this applies to cold cups as well. I mean, I think a lot of people think about that as, as uh, single use, um, go to a coffee shop, single use hot cups. So my question is, um, say, in part, that's to discourage single use because you can have a reusable container for that. How would we address situations where a reusable container isn't possible? I mean, if you are at a, a, a takeout restaurant and a, and a cold cup option isn't, they're not gonna accept possibly a cup for you to bring behind the counter or something for them to fill up a, a soda, for example. Um, how would we address that situation where we're still, somebody wasn't given really an option functionally to bring in uh, a reusable option? Uh, is there part of an outreach or a way that we can address those? Because I don't want to, I mean, it, I want to provide the discouragement, uh, but I also want to provide the ability to actually do something. And I want to ensure that, that everybody has the ability before they're charged. There was actually a recent change in state law that helps to facilitate this. It uh, removed some of the barriers to people doing exactly what you're just suggesting. Okay. It makes it far easier to bring your own containers to restaurants, including fast food restaurants, and have them refilled. Um, it includes some of the same cautions as in this ordinance so that there are protections for public health. <coughs> Businesses can uh, refuse to take a container that's dirty or damaged or for other reasons unsuitable. But beyond that, there's no reason that this wouldn't work at those restaurants as well as others. That's helpful. Um, my second question just dealt with um, some businesses in my district are already using compostable cups. They cost more, as you know. Um, there isn't there was some language about potentially if we decided to come back and do an actual ballot measure that there would be a differentiation. But at this point, uh, just so I have clarity, there's no differentiation between those that are already using a compostable cup and those that would be using, say, a plastic disposable cup. Not at this point, although as the board directed, we will be, de be doing outreach to local businesses on that question and, and other related issues to assess the interest in, in that kind of change in the future. I appreciate that because I wouldn't want to discourage businesses that have taken it upon themselves uh, to spend more money to do the right thing to of actually. Course. Thank you. Thank you for your work on this. Um, I look forward to voting on this uh, uh, measure uh, uh, soon. Um, I'm wondering uh, if you have a target date of when you're going to bring back the contact lens item. Um, and I realize that we uh, never, uh, we didn't talk about the last meeting about the effort around the microfiber filter um, and the public education that we talked about at our original meeting. We plan on bringing back a measure on a, a contact lenses no later than March, as well as the additional information the board requested on balloons. And we would be happy to uh, follow that same timeline on microfibers if that meets the needs of the board. Yeah, I'll add that to the uh, to the emotion now when the time comes. Thank you for your work. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I support these efforts and I know everybody on the board does and the people of Santa Cruz County have uh, really been supportive of the measures we've taken before. Um, but I have a concern that I've raised several times and I think this is good that we're taking this on, but I think the biggest impact, if we can create some kind of a regional solution and uh, as was mentioned last time, I think just a couple of weeks ago, 
that um, if we can get a regional solution so we can be on the same page with our own cities, uh, the four cities in this county, and I know you've been trying to do that and they've already have differentiations. So, but uh, if we can try to work that out, we're gonna have a much bigger impact and I know you agree with that, but I think that's the way that we have to address this in the future to really have a significant impact for the, the whole Santa Cruz County. Um, and. I, I would prefer that we spend these fees on environmental projects, but that would require an election. And I don't know, I'd have to, you'd have to figure out if that would be uh, um, receptive of the other board members too. But um, that's what we're, we're trying to do is protect the environment. And I think that's where these, uh, these efforts should be aimed uh, at uh, helping in that regard. We will be returning to the board with more information about the possibility of holding an election on the use of the fees. And I'll also share with you that we've done extensive collaboration, not just with the cities within the county, but across the region. I have been asked to share information and sometimes speak to the uh, other boards in the area, uh, numerous city councils, intergovernmental groups like the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments. So we're not quite at the point of um, regional action that you're suggesting, but, but there is movement in that direction. That's good to hear. I think that uh, ultimately that's what's going to really help us um, improve this situation. Um, so we're not having so many plastics in particular in our waterways, but throughout the community. <coughs> thank you. Yeah, I uh, thank you. Uh, um, I believe this is a good step in, a, in the right direction. Uh, I think what we need to really do also, most of these cups, cold or hot or whatever, they're not recyclable. Is that true? Under the county's current ordinances, the cups that are used in fast food businesses in the county must be either recyclable or compostable. That's correct. So, so currently the majority of them are one or the other or sometimes both. Okay. Now, um, of course, the recycling yeah. market has been in a state of turmoil, as everyone knows, so I might have a different answer on that next I week, know. but that's the truth today. And I think uh, something that could go along with this, and, uh, <clears throat> rather than uh, on everything having a surcharge or whatever, uh, that we we get these fast food places to have a, I call it a blue basket and then the garbage basket. Uh, you look, everything's going in the garbage at the fast food store. Uh, that would be the placemat, uh, that would be the cups, it would be the, uh, for breakfast and all the containers that they put everything in and on. Um, it, it ends up all in the garbage. All they have to do is separate uh, and have a recyclable, uh, bin and also a garbage bin. Uh, I think I've seen uh, a few Starbucks that have that. And we, we need to do that because that's a lot of garbage that's going into the landfill and probably a certain percentage could be recycled. And then the other would be to go after the producers, the, uh, the people who make up all these plastic things to make sure that they are uh, able to recycle everything that they're making. The state has actually taken some related action on both of those items. The governor recently signed a new bill that will require businesses across the state to provide recycling bins for their customers and where appropriate compost bins as well. As part of updating our county code, we're working with council to integrate those new requirements into our uh, county code, and that will be coming before you in the near future. I, I think I like that. I, I think that's gonna be a bigger help than this. This is a step in the right direction though. Absolutely, you'll be and seeing that soon. As uh, far as turning off the tap on plastic pollution, there was a lot of publicity about a, a pair of bills in the legislature last session, uh, AB 1080 and SB 45, which would have uh, established significant requirements on the producers of plastic packaging and other kinds of 
packaging that are uh, problems in litter and pollution. That bill was continued into the next session, which begins in January, but we're optimistic at seeing significant state action on those bills. Okay. And I'll just uh, throw this out. Uh, I think 25 cents is what is being proposed here. That's correct. Okay, I'd, I'd just throw it out. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see it less, have it in, uh, conform with Watsonville, the city, uh, 10 cents. Uh, but uh, I think that that, uh, I think both of them will, will uh, achieve what we're looking for. And 25 cents seems to be quite a bit, but if anybody wants to second that, I guess I'm offering that as an amendment. Okay. I don't hear any, you're not fighting to- Well, second. you might remember, uh, Supervisor, that uh, when uh, staff talked about uh, the setting of the 25 cent fee, it was based on re social science research, which showed that it, at, at a quarter, is when people actually started shifting their practice at 10 cents, not so much. And so what, what we're trying to do here is get people to shift their, um, the, their habits, to start thinking about having reusable cups that they can bring with them um, and stop the use of single use uh, uh, disposable cups. And so that's why uh, we're considering this fee. Uh, it's been considered in other cities as well. Okay. Anyway. I, I would add that the draft ordinance in process at the city of Santa Cruz currently has the 25 cent charge as well. Um, that's tentatively scheduled bef to go before their council in January. Okay. All right, uh, so that fails for lack of a second. Uh, we have a comment. Thank you for this um, information. My name is Becky Steinbrun. We're a resident of rural Aptos. Um, I, I really want to thank you for the work and support to, uh, reduction in plastic overall. Um, does somebody need to start my timer? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. But anyway. <laughs> um, I, I have... Um, I have a, an, an issue with compostable things because my kids have done science fair experiments and things to compost need air and compostable items do not re, uh, compost in the landfill. So it's sort of a, a false impression. Uh, when something goes to the landfill, it's, it's there because there's no air in that and to compost, you have to have air. So what I would like to see in this county is going along in the vein of what Supervisor Caput said, let's put more separation for opportunities for the customers who are gonna pay more for these cups and put them in a separate bin and then let's establish a composting uh, site for this where it's ground up, not unlike our yard waste, where things actually do compost. They are uh, turned and, and they do compost and that would truly reduce the amount of um, material going into our landfill. It would also raise the awareness as Supervisor Caput has said that yes, you can help separate things. And, and it gives people uh, sort of a stake in the game other than just shelling out another quarter for the use of these one-time plastics. I also really feel that um, we need to look at how this extra 25 cents on each cup is gonna be used. We've, we've seen with the plastic bag ordinance where people are um, reducing use of plastic that way, bringing their own bags, but still the merchants get that extra quarter. And I would really like to see, uh, there's been nothing changed in the bag ordinance that put some of that money into um, recycling efforts, um, composting efforts, something like that. And I would really like to see this county take a lead in that and um, the bag ordinance has been in effect long enough that we can now, uh, our, our merchants have their own um, suppliers and they've kind of worked it out. And I think we need to really step up a little bit further and do that with this cup a ordinance also to, 
to go the extra step, use some of that money that merchants are collecting, that people are willing to pay, and let's put it to really reducing the landfill impacts and to doing true composting that can really make a difference. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. You know, uh, we, we have KSBW TV here and uh, normally they're asking us questions and opinions. I just wanted to ask uh, Phil Gomez, I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, what's your opinion on this? I have no, nothing to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> decline to comment then. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Thank you, go ahead. Uh, uh, this may seem a little fanciful, but, but bear me, with me. In London, I, I worked for one of the largest defense corporations in uh, the country, Vickers Armstrong Company. And one of their side products was uh, hyperbaric chambers, medical use chambers. I'm trying to answer Becky's question about the need for oxygen to decompose things. Um, uh, the hyperbaric chamber produces oxygen, I, I think up to three or four times normal atmospheric level. That's enough oxygen to break down anything. Um, increasingly industrial experimental products are becoming available that can take any kind of hydrocarbon and process it either into fuel or, uh, as gas or liquid uh, or our other um, byproducts. So we, our technology department should, should be looking into stuff like that. I'll try to be helpful. Monica McGuire again singing for you. We hear these voices singing these songs. There are many more of us who need to sing along. We Talk about reuse being infinitely better than recycling. The phrase I brought up last time, and I hope you will use it, cause there's so many ways we can't see people getting involved and caring past their overwhelm. People need a reason to join in and do something better for all of us. Maslow's hierarchy shows we can't if we're doing too much to pay rent and buy the food to begin with. So I'm glad you're talking about it again. Ask you to remember the cigarette butt problem that was brought up before as well. And thank you, Becky, for being an unpaid supervisor with her incredible ability to bring all the information she learns to this microphone in just three minutes every time. Thank you. That was beautiful, thank you, Monica. I think it was Albert Einstein who said, the best refuge from the miseries of life are music and cats. <laughs> thank you for the music part of it, Monica. Anyway, <laughs> I, talking about the manufacturers, the producers of these toxics, toxic plastics, chemicals, that's key. And I see this embedded, you know, I always ask this question, why is this happening? Why is this awful thing happening? And who benefits? And I see it as a system problem, that we're in a capitalist system where pollution is somebody's profit. Common sense tells us and scientific information that when contaminants are put into the environment, they're picked up in the whole food chain and most of them are there for years or almost forever. The question is, while these are good efforts, it's like a drop in the bucket 
And I think the figure I heard on the radio was $180 billion, is that it? And going into new plastic production. And I remember when the single use plastic bag ordinance that was passed, the bill also had money for producing more plastic, but bags that are used more than once. That doesn't solve the problem. It's at the production, the source. And how do we get to that? And to me, it's disconcerting the diversion to think we're really dealing with a problem in these efforts when the massive contamination and the profit of these corporations from producing this goes on and on. And it's, it's just really, uh, you know, many of you have young children. What kind of future is there for our children and the children of the planet and the wildlife and the insects with all this radiation and chemical pollution? We, we need a different system that prioritizes health and well-being and the environment well-being for everyone. It's a system problem. Thank you. Susan Cavallari, um, I just want to say that the uh, coffee cups that are uh, so ubiquitous in the city of Santa Cruz cannot be recycled. The interior of the cup is plastic, so it is not a single component of material. Um, I do wanna thank you very much for your efforts to limit the disposable cups. Um, there is a site called Rethink Disposal. Um, they say that Americans use 180 billion disposable cups annually. This amounts to using 22 billion gallons of water, 26 billion uh, pounds of CO2 is produced and over 20 million trees are lost. If you replace one cup every day for a year with a reusable cup or mug, you save 126 trees, 12 pounds of solid waste, 76 gallons of water, and 87.6 pounds of greenhouse gas emissions. So it is a very small step, but definitely one that needs to be done. Um, and so thank you so much for your action. Uh, I know Berkeley does 25 cents a cup um, and people have stated that if they have to pay 25 cents for a cup, they will bring their own. And this is the route that I believe we have to go. Thank you. Well, we'll bring it back. Um, I, uh, this has to have four votes, am I correct? No, this is just a majority. It just many, needs three uh, votes. Well, it's an ordinance uh, or what, uh, how, some, uh, some uh, action requires uh, four out of five and some require three out of five. <clears throat> this ordinance does not require four out of five votes. It's a simple majority. So th three, a majority is enough. That's correct. Yes. That's yes. Correct. Yes. That's why I just want to make it clear. Uh, uh, Chair, I would like to uh, make the motion to uh, to adopt the recommended actions and direct our, and additionally uh, direct our staff to return or in March or before uh, around a contact lens ordinance um, information about the uh, about the balloons and uh, information about a public education campaign around the microfiber. Uh, uh, pollution strategies. And then uh, to clarify to the public, 25 cents goes to the, uh, the actual business or the, uh, the one uh, that has to do the, uh, uh, the reuse. 
Is that correct? That's correct. The, right. the funds would remain with the business. So it's not a tax that we're getting the money from? That's correct. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None. It passes four to nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then we go to item number 11 uh, quickly. Uh, ordinance amending chapters 9.08, 9.16, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 9.24, 9.25, 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, 9.29, 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, 9.36, 9.37, 9.38, 9.39, 9.40, 9.41, 9.42, 9.43, 9.44, 9.45, 9.46, 9.47, 9.48, 9.49, 9.50, 9.51, 9.52, 9.53, 9.54, 9.55, 9.56, 9.57, 9.58, 9.59, 9.60, 9.61, 9.62, 9.63, 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, 9.67, 9.68, 9.69, 9.70, 9.71, 9.72, 9.73, 9.74, 9.75, 9.76, 9.77, 9.78, 9.79, 9.80, 9.81, 9.82, 9.83, 9.84, 9.85, 9.86, 9.87, 9.88, 9.89, 9.90, 9.91, 9.92, 9.93, 9.94, 9.95, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 9.99, 
Christina. Good morning. The California Green Business Network, Network has been operating as a nonprofit for the past four years and has received three one million annual appropriations from the Cal EPA to start several new programs and to fund existing programs. The County of Santa Cruz has received $20,000 in funding each year from the state and will continue to receive this funding. We would like to thank the board for the support to keep this program successful. The names of the businesses that have qualified for this year's Green Business Award will now be read so that representatives of these businesses are recognized for their efforts. When the name of your business has been read, please come to the front of the room. Members of the audience, uh, please uh, hold your applause until the end of the reading for each district so we can celebrate the businesses within each district together. Uh, we'll start with the businesses in the first district announced by C uh, Supervisor John Leopold. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you to all the businesses who take the time to go through this uh, certification. As I look at this year's list, there are so many businesses that I frequent um, and know that they uh, also contribute back to the community in lots of different ways. This is just another way in which they are showing uh, their commitment to our community. If the following businesses would, uh, would come forward for receiving certification, Clearview LLC, Coffeetopia on both Portola Drive and Capitola Road, New Bohemia Brew Brewing Company or Nubo, Lewis Tree Service, PPD Meet Multimedia, Salon Santa Cruz, Bobby's Pit Stop, IO Motors, Discretion Brewing, Monterey Bay Mortgage, Santa Cruz N Neurofeedback Center, Somerset Door and Window, The Jam Lab Santa Cruz, Treehouse, Skyland Community Church, Mix Automotive, the Santa Cruz County Sanitation District, Congregational Church of Soquel, and Green Man Organics. Please give these businesses a round of applause. District uh, Supervisor uh, Zach Friend. Thank you, Chair. We have a number of businesses in the second district as well. We have Matter Cushions and Accessories, Art of Santa Cruz, the Housing Authority of the County of Santa Cruz, Kickback, the SOS Company, the Zero Shop, Mid Valley Supply, the Grunsky Law Firm, Applied Survey Research, Totalcom, Santa Cruz County Bank, Aptos, the Maynard Group, Web of Life Field School or Wolf School. Capitola Vet Hospital, Emerald Iguana Salon, New Leaf Community Market in Capitola, Way of Life, Whole Foods Market in Capitola, <coughs> Satellite Telework Network, Mount Madonna Center and Institute and the Mount Madonna School and the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County. And also because Supervisor Coonerty couldn't make it, I'd like to recognize his businesses in the third district, which is the Davenport Resource Service Center. If you are here, please give these businesses also a round of applause. I'm just curious, uh, from the Grunsky Law Firm, is that, uh, is, we have somebody from the Grunsky Law Firm? Yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah, <laughs> as, 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 as that goes way back uh, when I was a kid, there was a senator or a congressman or so, a Grunsky. Yeah, yeah, let him finish taking the picture. Okay, <laughs> okay. One day at a time. <laughs> Okay. 
the fourth district, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Digital Nest, Immigrant Legal Services of the Central Coast, Freedom Tax Service, Neutral, uh, Nutri Natural and Katotani Auto Repair, Katie's uh, Cold Press Juice and Smoothies, Pajaro Valley Chamber of Commerce and Agriculture, Carol's Flowers Decorations and Gifts, <clears throat> Revolution Gym and Wellness, Green Waste Recovery Inc., Monarch Services, Kitchen Incubator, El Pajaro Community Development Corps, and uh, Pajaro Valley Arts, the Watsonville Law Center, and the Santa Cruz County Bank Watsonville Office. Please give these businesses a round of applause. Five. Yes, thank you. Uh, last but not least in the fifth district. Um, and I, all, I want to just uh, congratulate each and every one of the businesses. Uh, what you're doing is making our communities better and more environmentally sound. Uh, it's so important. This is uh, where, we, where the rubber hits the road, where we really get things done and the local people are doing it. So I appreciate each and every one of the businesses, but those from the uh, fifth district, are the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, Suki's, Santa Cruz County Jail, Chocolate Visions, Faust Salon and Spa, Scotts Valley Chamber of Commerce, Brunetti's Interiors, City of Scotts Valley, Wild Roots Market in Felton, Santa Cruz County Bank, Scotts Valley, and the Scotts Valley Water District. On behalf of the County of Santa Cruz, I want to thank each business recognized today for the continued support of County's Green Business Program. We invite business representatives to gather in the hallway where Public Works staff have arranged a reception. Uh, we'll take at least a 15 minute break. Plus session. Uh, Plus session. Uh, uh, we'll come back for closed session. Do we have anything reportable from closed session? There may be a reportable item depending on your vote. Right. Okay. Thank you. Authorize my office to file an appeal in a matter that is confidential. Uh, once that appeal is on file, I can answer questions about the uh, procedural aspects of it. Thank you. Can you say which case that appeal applies? Thank you. Thank you for checking. 
go back and close No, they're done. They're done. It's done for the day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.